So without further ado, I then want to welcome Ramakan. He is a repeat collaborator with the museum and a favorite artist instructor across all of our audiences. Ramakan is a fabric artist based in San Francisco and the founder of Crochet Jam, a community art project rooted in a cherished childhood memory of his, one that's steeped in the African-American tradition of weaving in a calm and non-judgmental environment without rules or limitations. He's going to be able to give us a lot more guidance in that realm as well. Um, Crochet Jam brings people together to participate in crocheting large free form rags in public. And this is something I have actually made in past Crochet Jam. Yeah, there's just so much going on here. So I'm excited to, to add to it, to, to learn a little bit more. Um, and thank you, Ramakan, for continually fostering a creative culture through your cooperative relationships. Um, thank you so much for being here with us and thank you to everyone else as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, you know, I'm very excited to be a part of the event, this, you know, the, the kick off the week, craft week and be a part of the Museum of Design and Craft here in San Francisco. I feel very at home there. So crochet jam, right? I mean, the idea is that you allow the material to inform you about what it wants to become, right? So the idea is to, there's no pattern. You're not following a pattern. You're allowing the material just to transform right in front of you. So, you know, so to get started, you know, with finger crochet, we're just gonna make a chain, right? So the idea is with, with the fabric that you already have, that you've already cut, right? About an inch or an inch and a half, doesn't matter. It can be, you, you know, if, if it's a little, little shorter, a little wider, it doesn't matter. The idea is that we want to just tie those strips of color together, those strips of fabric, right? So the idea is to have an experience in Crochet Jam where you're not being told what to do and you're not being judged by what you create, right? So whatever you create, you accept it. Whatever you create, you accept it. These are all your colors. These are all your patterns. You made the decisions about it. I'm just a, the facilitator to help navigate how you organize your materials. You know, I'm not, I am not your decision maker. You will make all of the decisions. I am not your authority, right? So the idea is to have a liberated experience, a liberated experience where you're not following the rules and you're not following any patterns. So for right now, I, I hope that everyone ha had an opportunity to see the videos about finger crochet. And if you haven't, that's okay. I will show you how to do that, right? And then for those people who do know how to finger crochet, let's, you know, and those who don't, Let's just start by making a chain of fabric. So for right now, any color, any color of fabric that you have, and here's my, you know, <laughs> collection of fabric. We're just gonna start by tying them together. You know, just loosely tying them together, like you tie your shoestring, right? So make this, make this, this uh, your first collection of strips of fabric that you. Make it as long as you want. And then we'll go from there to turning it into loops, a chain of loops. But for right now, we're just going to make, uh, we're just going to tie the strips of fabric together that you like. Now, don't worry about how it looks. Any color, any pattern you like. So for right now, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie these two together like you tie a shoestring you know, or a double knot. All right? Just loosely, very, very carefree, right? And leave, you know, don't worry about how long it is or how short it is. That will be incorporated. So, right? So you just tie your, you know, and then at the very end, you find another strip of fabric that you like. You know, like I'm gonna just, I'm gonna use this one and it's gonna tie it together.
All right, so I, so I just have one, you know. So let's, let's tie about maybe four or five strips of fabric. You know, don't worry about how it looks. Just be as carefree as you can and just let go. Because these are all your colors. It's bound to be beautiful, bound to be beautiful. Okay, so I just need to know where, so now um, at the end of your, of, your, of your strips of fabric, at the end, we're gonna make a loop. So we're gonna just wrap it over and then we're gonna tie a knot at the base. So just like you did before, tie a double knot at the base. So here's a loop. You want to keep that loop, keep that loop, and then tie a knot at the base. So if, if you don't, if you didn't get it, that's okay. I'll show you again. So you want to you want to have a, a loop and a double knot. Okay. So one more time. So here's my strip of fabric, right? I'm just gonna loop it over and cross it at the bottom. Can you see that? And keep my loop and then the string at the bottom, I'm gonna tie it through the loop once and then tie it one more time to make a double knot. Is that, is that clear? Does anyone need any help? Let me know if you do. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to make our loops. Okay. So great. So now you just uh, put your put your index finger on your thumb in the loop. Index finger on your thumb. And then the string here, you just bring it up and you grip it, just pinch it. And then you just pull the fabric over. See the new loop? So index finger and thumb, pull the fabric up, and then pull the, the fabric on the top over. Another loop. Yes, yes. So you want to be a little tighter. Scott. Loops a little tighter. And you just keep going. And soon you'll have a chain of loops. Shall I repeat that? Good. Good, okay. Okay. And now you just keep going. Just keep making a chain of loops. Don't worry about how it looks. Some may be some may be a little a little bigger, a little smaller, but that's okay. Hey, Ronica. Yes. Looks like we do have some requests for repeating. Okay. That last step a couple of times, and then just making sure um, that you're speaking as loud as possible. We have one request, but how is that? Is that better? It sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I got I got to project. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so with our loop, right? We have our index finger and our thumb and we put it inside the loop. All right? And with the string, you roll it up and you pinch it with your finger. Right? And then the fabric on top, you just pull it over. Right, a new loop, you see it? Right, and then you bring, the, you bring the, the tail of the fabric up one more time and you pull the fabric over. So index finger and thumb, and you know, and you just keep going. 
I'll repeat that. So here's the loop, right? Your index finger and thumb go inside the loop, right? And then you bring the, the tail of the fabric and pinch it with your index finger and your thumb. Is and this now top, yes. Is this considered a chain stitch? Yes. I, with, with your fingers. It's a chain stitch with your fingers, yes. Oh. And you just keep going. So make, make your chain of loops as long as you want. And then, and then from there, we will start to weave. All right, so I'm making mine. Let me know if anyone needs any help. I'll be happy to help. Now the, the, what's happening is that since there are no rules and you're not following a pattern, there is something that psychologists call cognitive dissonance. Because there's, because there's something you want and you can't have it, right? So you don't quite know what you're making, right? And that leaves people a little on the edge, right? So, right? So take three deep breaths and keep making your chain and it'll all make sense in a few minutes or hopefully make a little more sense in a few minutes. Right. So you should look like, you know, something like this. I mean, I know it doesn't, it doesn't look very, very promising right now, <laughs> but it will change. It will change. So it's going to keep changing. So sometimes you're gonna like the change and you're calm. Sometimes you are not gonna like the change and you're calm. In a meditative public event or community event like this, the idea is to be calm continuously. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you're just calm. And you'd be detached. So detached meaning that you're not worrying about the outcome. They're all, they're all your colors. It's all going to work out, all right? So let's keep making our chains, you know. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right here, so everyone can see what I have here. And then I'm gonna show you how to finger crochet, right? So I want to make sure that everyone feels the same way about it. Everyone, how is everyone doing? Does everyone have a chain? Good. Let me know if you don't. And I want to make sure because my, my thing is to make sure everyone has as much time to create their piece as possible. And we spend less time on technique. Right. So that way you're able to just jump right in and see things change and change and change. And you <laughs> and you do your best to be calm, calm, calm. Okay, so shall I continue with uh, Crochet, the crochet, the weaving. Is that good? Okay. Okay, so on my chain of loops, I'm going to, I'm going to pick, you know, a loop that I like. Any loop that I want, right? See, there, there are loops all the way around it. There's loops here. There's loops there, all right? Anywhere you want, pick a loop, you know, and pick a loop that you like and put your index finger and thumb inside there. Any loop on your chain that you like, right? Okay. Okay, now find another loop that you like, another loop. So it can be anywhere you want on there. So it could be, for me, it could be right here. So right now you have two loops on your chain, on your index finger and thumb, excuse me, index finger and thumb. There's two loops there. Right? You know what, you know what, let, let, let me, let's back up a minute. Let's back up a minute. Let's go, 
I'm sorry. Let's. I don't want to confuse you. Let's go to the to the to the uh, to the last loop that you had on your chain. The last loop, right? The last loop on your chain for your tail, right? There you go. So let's do that again. So you got you got one loop, and then you find another loop that you like, and you put your fingers and you put your. So now you got two loops on your chain. Right. Now with your with, with your fabric, you do the same thing. You pull it up and you pinch it. And now you have see now you have two loops and you pull both of them over. Right? I'll show that I'll 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 show you that again. Right? So here's my loop, my first loop, index finger and thumb. And then I find another loop that I like. Index, right? Now you got two loops. You, you know, right? You add fabric, and you pull both loops over. One, two. <laughs> yes. Right. Now, you keep going. So anywhere on your chain, anywhere on your chain. Find another loop that you like. Since you're not following a pattern, it won't matter. So you got one loop, right? And then you find one that you like, and now you got two, right? And then you add fabric, you pinch it. So you want you want to have it all on one hand, not not two separate hands, all on one hand. Is that helpful, Scott? Yeah. So yeah. So two loops. Yeah, so, right, so there's one here, and then another one that's, you know, here, all on one hand, great. And then you grab the fabric, the end of the tail, and then you slide the two loops over. Good. And now you keep going. <laughs> so you got, you know, find another loop and keep going. So what you're making is soft sculpture. All right? My two loops, my fabric, and I bring it over. And soon it will have a it will have a shape. And after a while, if you keep going, uh, it will be as, see the piece on my on the wall there? <laughs> so the idea is, if you allow the material to be what it wants to become, eventually it will reveal its secrets and you'll create something you've never seen before. Right? Allow the material to inform you about what it wants to become. And eventually it will reveal its secrets. So the idea is to let go of trying to control the material. Right? And just keep going. Right? So here's my loop, my index finger and thumb, a new loop, index finger and thumb, and then the end of the end of my fabric, I pinch it, and then I bring both over, one, two, and a new loop. Monica, and we have a couple questions. Yes. Um, first of all, how much of the original chain of fabric should be looped before the double loop starts? Uh, that's up to the individual. Okay. So if you can make you can make your chain of loops as long as you want, mm -hmm. or as short as you want, and start whenever you like, or you can make two separate pieces, you know, and join them together. 
And can you go backwards and forwards? Oh, I don't know. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. We're gonna... Come on now. <laughs> no, that's radical. <laughs> that's encouraged. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely encouraged. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Go back and forwards. Even you can go right through the middle. You know, take your take your loops, right? Here's your you know, index finger and thumb and put it right in the middle of your of what you're creating. Right in the middle. And bring the whole thing, to bring the whole piece over. Grab it and pull it through. I, I gotta put some more fabric, right? So the idea is to just let your mind play, you know, back, you know, back and forwards, up and down. You can, you can on your chain, you can skip. There are no rules. If you want to go to on your chain one, two, three, four, you don't want to go to you don't want to go one, two, three. You can go to four, or you can go to eight, or whatever it is, eighteen, if you have, and just see what happens, right? Just see what happens. Just let go of trying to control the materials. Since there's no rules, you're liberated to pursue any avenue within the context of what we're doing, any way that feels good, you know, it's comfortable for you. So, and you also, and since I have these, these tails here, I can tie on fabric on there as well and keep, and keep going. So I can just tie on fabric. All right, and then if I want to, I'll hook and just use my finger, find another loop, one finger, right? And then wrap the fabric around it and pull them both over. But you'll, get, you'll figure out your own pattern. But for right now, just follow what I, what I laid out and then change it if you like, right? Remember, I'm just giving you the technique. You can change the technique any way you want. No, I'm not saying stick to my technique. You know, you can, you can discover your own. And I encourage you to do just that. But the idea of Crochet Jam is to have an experience where a perceived authority gives up his, his or her power so that you as participants can maintain your agency, can maintain your agency, make your decisions, make your choices, uh, bring, bring forth your creativity and your vision without me as a, as a facilitator dictating the creative process. I'm not saying eight rows of red, four rows of blue, and we're making a pot holder. That's something you could do, no doubt about it. Or, or a scarf or a rag rug. There's nothing wrong with that. But within the context of crochet jam, the idea is to let go of all of those and to see in what way the material can inform you about what it wants to become. And after this, right? So I've, I've showed you how to make the chains. Some of you already know how to do that. I've showed you how to crochet. Now, the fabric is your teacher. I have no more to teach you. The fabric is your teacher. And a lot of that will be about how you feel about, you know, breaking the rules, following a pattern, what colors I like, what colors I don't like, and saying, does it matter? Overall, they're all your choices. So sometimes you're going to like it. Sometimes you're not going to like it. But the idea is to be, as they say in meditation, equanimous. 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 Are there any questions? Let me know. I'd be happy to help. Let's see. We have, just to make sure that I'm following, make a chain and pick random stitches to join with a new stitch. Yes. And Continue to add new chain stitches and joins as your subconscious desires. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the only thing new about crochet jam is that usually people come to a, a workshop, a craft workshop, and they have expectations about making a finished product. 
But with Crochet Jam, I bring you into a craft workshop, but it's about liberating your thoughts about what you're making and your association with what you're creating. Yes. Yeah, so it's all about going on the inside. What are my, what are my thoughts, ideas about uh, following the rules, breaking patterns, uh, conformity, all that. So, so it's more of an individual journey of self-discovery and insight, which is what I like about it so much. Is that it's, I, am not in the, I am not a focus on me. It's more about a focus on the participants and, what, and how you feel about exploring another way of being creative in a positive way in community. I do have a question myself, actually. Um, Absolutely, was, that's great. <laughs> I was wondering if you, um, although I know it's not all about you, I was wondering if you could share a bit about your fabrics and how those make their way into your practice, where they're coming from. Ah, I'll be happy to. So there is a, there is a, uh, a store here in San Francisco, a nonprofit called Scrap. Um, which it's a fantastic store there. there it's a, it's a, uh, a community of giving. It's a giving community. And there's so many in the Bay Area, so many in the world. Um, and so I go there and I find the scraps that I find the, the beautiful, whatever the patterns. The idea is to trust my own, as I'm asking you to, to trust your own vision and let that lead you. And so I go there to get the scraps. And sometimes people give me scraps as well. You know, but since I can't go there now, right, I'm either having to like, you know, rely on what I've already bought there months ago or to use the materials that I already have here that I, that, you know, like my own pillowcases, sheets that I want to uh, recycle, repurpose and reuse. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. But there are many places in the city that, you know, but maybe not now though, given the, given our current situation. Um, Scrap, so everyone knows, does actually have some open hours right now. Oh, wonderful. Limited and limited time, yeah. So oh, they you. would love to see you, I'm sure. Oh, great, thank you, Scott. We've got the, the link to Scrap in the, um, in the chat right now, so everybody- Fantastic, thank you, Scott. You're doing great stuff. Um, Ronica, would you mind talking a little bit more about this, um, how this process comes from your memory of childhood and um, African American tradition? Oh, I'll be happy to. So, um, when I was growing up in the North Carolina in the '60s, my my grandmother uh, was a quilt maker, so she made quilts. And so, growing up in the '60s, uh, which isn't very similar than when I'm feeling about now, uh, dealing with uh, 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 de facto segregation, Jim Crow, and homophobia. So I was a teenager, no, maybe a teen, I was probably 10 or 12. My grandmother said to me one day, she saw me running around and she goes, come here boy, help me with this quilt. And I thought, oh, to myself, so I didn't say anything to grandma. I thought, Oh, grandma, the last thing I want to deal with now is to be seen sewing with my grandmother. That's, you know, but in those days, if a, if a person, you know, a parent or an authority uh, told you to do something, you had a few milliseconds to do it or you're putting your life in danger, seriously, because, you know, so I was thinking all of this as I was walking toward her. And so she said, any color, any pattern you want, I will show you how to add it to my quilt. So my grandmother already had a pattern that she spent months on, the quilt that she was making. And she allowed me to break that pattern. Mm -hmm. So conceptually, the symbolism of being embraced and cared for and accepted was huge. She didn't say, uh, here, take red and yellow and cut it and put it in this pattern. 
So the idea of being able to uh, give to others what I need came from her. So within the art world, the parallel construction is in the art world, um, the idea of me being a painter and I tried to be a painter because that's what I thought fine art and my job was to be. It's like to paint or to make sculpture with, you know, with traditional materials. And for a long time, I could not get my work into art spaces or museums or whatever. And that's not unusual. The idea of an artist trying to get it, to get accepted into these, you know, into these uh, revered spaces. And then I had an epiphany where I thought, you know, I can be very angry about this or I can reflect and go, okay, so what am I really asking from these curators, collectors, museum, what am I, what do I want from them? And can I, can I calm myself enough to give that to myself and put that into the world? You know, and, and when I, when I was able to calm myself and reflect, I remembered the thought, the memory had always been there. The, the, the history had always been there with my grandmother, but I've never saw it in the context until I was able to say, I'm going to define my art on my own terms, outside of a traditional way of, of making art and what's respected as art, given the materials that I use. So when I decided to take an about face, I remember my grandmother you know, helping me you know, with, the, with this quilting thing. And I thought, well, why not, why not, uh, let that be my art. And I thought, there's just no way that's going to work because that's, that's not what the art world's looking for. But the minute I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to let go of how it's supposed to be and accept how it is. You know, no one in my family walked around wearing a uh, oil painted uh, dress made of canvas. The people, the people in my family didn't, didn't paint with oils or acrylics. They worked with textiles. My mother made quilts. She made some of our clothes. She worked in a textile mill. My father worked in a textile mill. My grandmother made quilts. We all made, we all, they were expressing their worldview, their pain and anger, their happiness and joy through fabric. So I thought, you know, that's something to pay attention to really, because everyone's wearing fabric. I mean, if they're not wearing fabric, we definitely know who they are. There's just no getting around. <laughs> I mean, we, they don't go unnoticed, that's for sure, right? Stick if they're shopping at Macy's or Costco or they did. Anyway, so it dawned on me that we have an intimate relationship with fabric. All, everyone does. Every culture has a textile tradition of weaving. Not very few, I don't know of any that don't. That don't. So, I've decided to use fabric as a way and my and uh, through crochet jam as a way to help other people give to them what I need to feel embraced, not told what to do, not be judged, uh, and to rely on their own creativity because it that is from the inside out, and we pay so much attention to the outside that now for an artist, he or she being able to navigate their own emotions and feelings with, with materials that are unique to their experience. For me, oil painting was not my, was not, that's a European Western tradition. You know, it's, it's too removed. So I, that's a long way to answer your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, I hope that, that makes some sense. We do you have an earlier request too for um, later on if we can see a little bit more of your work? I'd be happy to do that. No, I'd be very happy to. Yes. It looks like we do have another question asking if you recommend or use any particular types of fabrics, cotton or wool or synthetics or variety. Um, thank you. Um, I, I use what I have or what I can, you know, and then the more variety, the better, the more variety, because it, 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 because since everything is so random, you don't quite know where it's going to pop up. Like if, if it's wool or other materials, the, the, you know, celebrate the unexpected and within this context, it, it, it's harmless. 
right? But to get our minds, our creative minds, uh, accustomed to accepting the randomness of things. Because we don't like that. We don't like randomness. It's too, un too unnerving. It's too un it's But randomness can be an, a foundation for a aha moment. Aha, right? Like, because if you, if you keep following a pattern, then randomness isn't allowed to happen. The minute you break the pattern, randomness, and you see things you haven't seen before. So the different materials, like I don't, unless I, like for, for example, uh, jeans, because it's so heavy, you have, to, you have to cut them pretty thin to be able to weave them. So I, I avoid materials that are just too heavy and too thick. But at the same time, I will, I will throw in things that are just like, you know, that are just, you know, colors and patterns that are just unpredictable that I will cut and put in, right? That will, that, you know, adding this to this when, when it's cut and will be something that no one has seen before. You know, the idea, how do you create something that no one has seen before? Because everyone, everyone has a very sophisticated visual knowledge. Even, even little children have a very, with all that, all their technology, even a little kids has an, a wealth of images. So creating something no one has seen before, that's really tough. And that's what you're doing. Every one of you is creating something that no one has seen before. No one, and no one else can create it. And that's very special, that's very powerful. So yeah, you know, whatever materials, the broader, but as long as they work for you, as long as they work for you, And you also, you can add, you know, you can, if you want, instead of using one strip of fabric, you can use two and make a, and make a chain of loop using two strips of fabric, right? Or three, or, you know, the idea, once you get comfortable, you can break the pattern that I've laid out for you, or you can add or amend it. And see, <laughs> and yes, I like, I like what Jan has, like the whole idea of all that, Yes, that's, yes, just, just, yeah, just to play, yes. Oh, yes, and, uh, yes, and Lisa's, yeah, I think now, you, now, you, now you're getting it, yes. Just let it, just let, let it just be what it wants to be. Beautiful. So are there, is there anyone who, you know, who needs a, uh, a help, who's new, who just came on with us, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you bring you up to speed. Scott had asked if you um, have ever made any wearable clothes this way. Um, no, not specifically. But let me give you an idea right back. <laughs> Can you see it? Oh yeah. Wow. Then now it's wearable. <laughs> <laughs> For a little while because it's really heavy. But nothing that's designed to like a shirt or yeah, right. nothing specific as of yet. But the idea is, you know, that, that you're, we have materials that are in our house, you know, strips of fabric, stuff that we can recycle, repurpose and use, stuff that we can tear and cut, that we don't have to buy anything. You know, you already have it there. And that it can be materials that can be as creative as they can, as they are meditative. And any time of our lives, there needs to be moments where we can combine creativity and a meditative event or meditative activity that can affect 
uh, in a positive way. And we bring that positivity and that calmness and happiness to everyone we meet. So I, that's one reason why I, I like crochet jam because when people are crocheting, you can just see when, when, they, when they come to the event, first they have like, uh, no, I don't know about this. Like, I don't know what's going on. And then you give them about 10 minutes and like, okay, you know, they, they, you know, they, they are able to let go because they know that I'm not trying to control their, what, what they're creating. Uh, we do have a request to get another look at that piece you just displayed and maybe how that piece would usually be shown if it was used on the wall uh, as a rug or how you would usually display it. I'd be happy to. So, okay. So, and the, am I, oh, let me get, get it a little. Okay, so it's a little bigger than I am. But can you, no, so here is. Mm. Yeah. Or vertically. So it's like, you know. So since it has, since it's, it's, it's woven, there's, a, there's spaces in between the weave that you can put small nails and you can hang it, hang it on the wall. Like that. Wonderful. Or like, oops, do it coming in focus. There it is. Like that. So, um, yeah. so I remember I was in a, I was doing, I was in an art show, and I had made the a crochet piece like that, a little smaller. And it was hanging on the wall. And the curator's little, his, her, his six-year-old child came in and looked at, looked at the piece on the wall and looked at me and said to her father, putting her, putting her rug on the wall is silly. And I thought, that is the best thing. I could, I could not ask for a better comment. I, I was so happy. She thought that, you know, he was a little embarrassed, by it. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I didn't make her feel uncomfortable. I just thought it was, I just thought it was great. Because, you know, as an artist, I'm not, a, we're not about making, we're not, we're not making sense, we're making art. It's a very different equation, you know? Um, I've given up on the whole idea of making sense. I think making art is much more fulfilling. <laughs> Well, I can't find where I deal with my, I'm gonna make another one. Ramakan? Yes. Do you mind discussing um, some of the other very unexpected sorts of materials that you have incorporated into some of these pieces? 
Um, be happy to. So, you know, the, the whole idea of like uh, using materials that can, uh, any material that can push the mind to another, to another way of seeing something, you know, like even using straws or uh, washers, metal washers, or um, uh, what else that what else that we use? We use washers, straws, buttons, right? We have these buttons. Um, you know, whatever you have in whatever you have in in your house or whatever you have that's available that is unlikely. The idea is to link the unlikely. Link the unlikely. Right. So, and that and that sparks the the mind to think differently about what can go together like you know who says that you can't you can't weave in uh straws or you can't weave in buttons or, or attach buttons or that you can't you know so it it tells the mind that there are no limitations right after a while we're we're hardwired to expect only a b c and d and so that's the world we see and that's the world we navigate but, but all we got to do is just change our perspective, our perspective just a little bit, and a lot of other things open up. They've always been there, but with but if we are focused on one uh, point of view, that's all we see. So when we so using other materials, you know, like right now, you know, I'm using. I also have a string. Cause I have this thing about how, uh, like, not string, but so much like threads. You know, like how threads kind of drape down, and that they, when the wind moves, that they kind of, you know, it's kind of mysterious. So I have my some of these. I like having it so that they can. I unravel them. <laughs> I unravel the threads on them on the fabric, so that it unravels. Um, particularly on my sculpture, you know, I'm not sure if you can see the un the unraveled, uh, you know, unraveled. Uh, tied and reworked. So, you know, a little further back. Right. So, you know, so that, so it, um, what else have we used? We used a lot of different materials. Uh, we did with workshops at the museum. Do you have any, do you have any, other, any other examples that we do? Do you, do you remember? Um, I think, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, Akua, it looks like, said old videotapes, which was one of. Oh, yes. <laughs> that we used. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I mean, ceramics, you know, your, your pieces yes. uh, um, from the artist in residency with the ceramics were incredible. Okay. Okay. So I, I yes. Yeah, so I have a few of those. I have some of those here. I'm not sure if you can see this one. Can you see them there? Other than, not the stove, but, <laughs> <laughs> but so like right here. Yeah. Uh, right here. So the, the idea of like, you know, the idea of, um, of using different materials will take you to another level of dreamlike, of dreamlike uh, experience. You know, you know, buttons, tapes, you know, you know everything. You know, and then after a while, you keep, you keep exploring these different techniques, different materials, and then you'll have an aha moment that will tie into your own, your own uh, feelings and emotions. Okay, so for example, for example, ceramics, broken ceramics are all vessels. They're at one time they were a vessel, right? A bowl or cup, whatever, for the most part. A vase. And we are vessels, right? We, like a bowl holds, you know, whatever. And our bodies are vessels, you know, tissue, blood, muscles, memories. I mean, bazillions of things are inside our bodies and sometimes we feel broken and detached so in a dream language kind of thing how do i how do i express uh, metaphorically speaking how i feel without having to go around telling everybody i feel broken i blah blah blah, blah, blah right <laughs> you know what's a dream like if you were dreaming what might be a symbol that would tie into an emotion that you have in the working world and for me is broken ceramics. So when I so when so when when I'm 
weaving and crocheting with them, I'm also expressing my emotions because that's how I feel at times. But most people, what do they do with broken ceramics? They throw them away, <laughs> right? But I don't, I don't. Symbolically, I'm saying I may, or we may be broken, but we're not, you know, we, we are, we can be, we can be mended. We can be brought back together. We can be cared for. So I, I wrap them in fabric, All right? So, so if, for example, if I wasn't um, experimenting with adding new materials to my right or, or pushing ideas around within the context of just fabric, I don't think I would be with my studio practice using ceramics in the materials, right? Is that, is that helpful? Yeah, um, and Dottie has a question too about how you attach them. How do you keep those pieces oh. fixed? Okay, so, you know, um, okay, so, okay, yeah, I, I'll just show you. Okay, so, mm -hmm. okay, so you know how, uh, when I was growing up, my mother, I mean, it's, I, I have tons of stories, but, uh, but they all make sense. Okay, so when my, I hope they make sense. When my mother would um, plait my sister's hair, she would, they would, she would comb it and she'd have three strands, right? So I thought, hmm, I always saw that. And, and my mother would put things in their hair, <laughs> in my sister's hair, and they would stay there. So I thought I would take my, my, my fabric, get three strands, and, you know, and plait them. And then after a while, it looks like rope. And then because the ceramics is, uh, is sharp and rough on one edge, and the fabric is soft and can grab and hold, they stay together. So here's a close-up of it, all right? If I can, if I can give you a close-up. Go. Oh. I mean, I unplug this for one moment. Okay, so, so you can see here, here's one of the plaits. And then here's the plait where it's like being woven or crocheted. And then it's, and here it is when it's, uh, let me see, when it's crocheted around the ceramics. So I, Um, and that's what it, I mean, I don't, to be honest, I don't quite know how it works. All, <laughs> all I know is that if I crochet it, like, uh, my, like my sister's hair, when it's just, it, it holds the fabric, it holds the ceramics in there. Isn't that bizarre? So, so I, so I decided, you know, taking things out of one context and putting it in another context for another purpose, like my mother plaiting my sister's hair. That's what I have one context. I bring that into my uh, studio practice of weaving. So I'm plaiting, I'm plaiting fabric. And then I, then I take that and put it into another context, my sculpture around ceramics. So that creates, so that formula for me creates something no one has seen before. Taking something out of one context, putting it in another context for a completely different purpose. A very clear example would be, uh, you, you don't, you're not gonna, you won't believe it, but I'm gonna say this, so you're gonna think he's, he's gone now. He's, he's been crocheting for too long. He needs to take a little time out. Aviation, aviation. Taking one th something out of one context, different kind, all right. So the Wright brothers in the US, right? Does, remember what they were before, you know, they were bicycle repair men. Right? They took the bicycle out of one context, put it in another context, putting wings on it, putting wings on a bicycle, that's what they did, and then putting it and then creating for a whole other context, aviation. They eventually, they were eventually were able to uh, um, not pedal, but have gas engines that would, right? But they first started out by pedaling. And so I'm, I'm sure when, when someone said to them, you're going to put wings on a bicycle, everyone said, you know, guys, you know, you've been, <laughs> the oil, the bicycle oil, you got too close to the bicycle oil. I mean, you've, you know, you're hallucinating here. 
but that's how we got aviation. So, so when we're crocheting, like what you're doing here, you're taking something out of one context, out of the idea of crochet, out of the, out of the con concept of a, of a family and community context, and you're putting it in another context, a broader context, now it's virtual, for a whole other purpose, for, uh, med for meditative social interaction and creativity. Before it was, you know, it was a more of a functional purpose to build, to make something, you know, a quilt or uh, or, or rag rug, um, and uh, so that's that's my way of being able to. What is what is creativity? That's what I just, that's how I describe it. Mountain bikes were the same way. Mountain bikes also had its had its roots in the same concept, actually. Um. How are we doing? Can I see what people are making? Wow. Wow. Great. So, how, so how does it feel? How does it feel to, you know, what's, what's going on? What's your emotions around what you're creating? What's your, you know, what are your thoughts? I find it very meditative. I could just keep going. <laughs> That's really good. I'm glad that we have the time that we do to really get lost in it. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. People are showing me their, are showing me their, or they're showing us their creativity. Thank you, everyone. Scott has a great idea for uh, doing a, a post-pandemic tour of uh, other places that you enjoy um, making or visiting at um, Ramakan and doing like a crochet jam tour, which I think is a cool idea. I think it's great. When do you want to do that? When we can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we have so much to look, po look, look forward to when we can, right? There's so much, you know, there's us, uh, you know, you know, we, we can't, we, we, we may not be able to do it now, but you know, it's, things will change. So we have so much to look, so much positivity to look forward to. Um, we have a question. Andrea wants to know um, when you st uh, when you start to think more about the shape and like what the final piece is going to end oh, up. Uh, no, to be honest, I the more bizarre, <laughs> the more bizarre, the more I like it. The more it looks otherworldly. That's you no. Know, the minute it it, it takes on an, an otherworldly presence that's when i stop mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they're sometimes they're you know they're really big and then and then uh, i can uh sculpt them on the wall like you know i can make them really big like what you're doing and make more than one and i can put them on the wall in different shapes so it becomes something even though it's fabric it doesn't look like fabric it is like you know you don't it's how do you take something out of one context and, you know, and make it look like it's something else? Like it, it's fabric, but it looks like marble or it's fabric and it has a 3D context that fabric isn't supposed to have. You no, know, I, I try my best to um, allow the materials to uh, reveal its secrets by just... Uh, 
pushing it as far as I can. You know, it's naked as, you know, like, you know, when I hear voices say, no, they're not going to like that. And I go, okay, well, or I hear this negativity, like, no, it's too big. It's too bizarre. It's too strange. It's ugly. It's and I go, well, okay. And I, but I keep going. When I, when I start to hear those voices that tell me that, that, uh, that it shouldn't be this way, I know that I'm, I'm hitting a part of me that says, oh, you're pushing the envelope because that's your mother talking, that's some curator talking, that's uh, some uh, authority figure, who's, who's some teacher, someone, someone else's voice, right? That's when I know I need to keep going, that I'm, I'm really close to something that's quite different. There are a couple of comments about how the practice is um, affecting folks. One of them was, makes me think about how I might explore my fiber work in different ways. Absolutely. That's beautiful. I agree. And another, I'm responding to the texture more than the shape. Yes. When do you think about the shape of the final piece? That's a tough one. Um, you know, you know I, I try to like, you know, let it just, you know, like I mentioned before, when, when does it look like something that's, that's different that I haven't seen before or that's strange, to be honest. I mean, I like strange. I mean, how strange can you be with fabric? You know, how can you push the go? How can you, how can you push fabric so that it becomes strange? Um, but it's still fabric, which isn't, which isn't, dangerous right i mean it's it you know it, it, it it's um it's uh unexpected that's what i i go i i till it becomes unexpected but it but it but the idea is like you know with crochet jam and this material it, you can use it in any material you know the idea that i'm, I'm asking people to uh engage is an experience where you can uh, take any material and work with it in such a way and be, and be a master of the, of the material in such a way that it will, it will reveal its mysteries and it create something you haven't seen. So it doesn't, it could be marble, it could be, uh, 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 it could be mud, it could be, it, it, it could be wood, it could be uh, whatever you would, whatever material that you work with in your studio, it could be paint, why not? How do, how do you become, how do you become um, able to be the conduit for a new experience with those materials? Right. right. And then, and there's no hierarchy, right? I mean, fabric is no, it, this is just as valid as marble, just as valid as wood, just as valid as brass or gold. It's, there's no hierarchy, right? So it doesn't, so if you're not working, if you were, if you're, you know, if you're only working in fabric, there's no, uh, in my mind, the value is just as, the value isn't the material; it's the work, it's the person who 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 works with the material. He what he or she is able to allow the material to become. If it's gold, if it's brass, if it's marbles, you know, if it's fabric, if it's rocks, you know, if it's twigs, you know, we all know artists who work in these materials. There, for me, there isn't a hierarchy. You know, that's why I like making using folk art traditions and not put them on the floor but put them on the wall right or build them so that it becomes sculpture because that's a that's a fine art so taking something out of one context that's considered to be marginalized mm -hmm. and putting it in a rarefied um, context means it means that the materials are just as important as any other material that's in that in that realm I'm wondering as well, Lisa W had a comment related to um, materials. And Lisa, I don't know if you'd like to unmute and make that comment, or I think that would be wonderful to share. Thank you. Wow, a lot of back. <laughs>
I think that was a little, it was a little unclear. I'll share that one just the, yeah. uh, if I can, I can, I can say it now. I think there's not so much back noise. I was getting great. a lot of back noise. Um, oh, okay, great. Thank Go you. ahead. So I'm, I'm part of a Buddhist community that's been kind of in turmoil for a sexual um, I had a lot of brocade fabrics that I used to make covers for our Buddhist pet. And I had boxes of brocade wraps. So I just thought I would just cut the wraps up and start to play with them, make something else entirely. And it's really Okay, great. Really all over the place. Everything around me is covered with <laughs> gray. And just to share uh, in case, because it was a little receiving some feedback that those were a box of brocade scraps from fabrics used to make covers from meditation texts. Um, wow. and so bringing something when there's been chaos in the meditation community, um, bringing something together using those fabrics and colors. That's tremendous. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes, it's, it's as beautiful as it is healing. That's wonderful. And then we do have a question. Um, if you could further describe the technique for the wall rugs um, or how that differs. Ah, okay. So the, the, that one is that I was doing, a, you know, making like a rag rug going, you know, one, two, three, you know, following a pattern, one, two, three, and keep going. But within those patterns, I would change it, but I still follow a pattern, right? So unlike, unlike crochet jam, where there's no patterns, when I, for these on the, on the walls, they are a single, single stitch, a single stitch crochet is what it is. That's the only stitch I know. So it's single stitch crochet, like you're making a rag rug, but with variations. You know, I, I just, I curve it when I want to curve it. I make it long, I want to make it long. So. So it doesn't, it's not exactly, you know, any um, specific dimensions. So, it, so it's allowed to do ramble, ramble, rumble, ramble. <laughs> so that's, that is single stitch crochet. Allowed to ramble. Hopefully I'm not rambling, but still. Is that helpful? Okay. Um, and then, I, and then with the when I when I display it, I can let it drape, and let it let it just fold, you know, let it just fold anywhere and hang anywhere it wants. You know, I can I can put little nails, and hold it up, and give it any shape I want. You know, so, and you can do the same thing. You can, you know, and no one has seen this. So when you make, when you make it, it you know, in any pattern that you want, you can display it and it can take on a whole other shape on the wall or drape from the ceiling. But the whole idea of thinking about rag rugs or the creation of uh, soft sculpture in a whole different context. Yes, Rachel. Oh, was just going to pass along a couple more materials notes. Um, okay. One was a question um, if there are recommendations you would have for balls of scraps of yarn that are tied together. And then this other comment and question, um, what about the use of natural items? So vines or grass or daylilies, Absolutely. really interesting. You know, the vines, grass, uh, hay, uh, weeds, whatever, you know, I mean, they may not, they may not last, but that's okay. They, you know, it, the, the textures may inform you about how to twist and turn other materials, right? So experimenting in different materials is great. So I'm not, you know, so I mean, I know some people would say, well, why bother? But I go, well, that, if, that's a, if that's a idea or interest of yours, then I would pursue it. Not because, not because it, it, you know, I agree that you should do it or that somebody else says you should or should not. But if it's, if it's coming from the inside out, you can always trust your intuition. It's coming from the inside out, you know? Um, 
and that that may be something you want to write in your in your journal or or if you have time actually pursue it because something about it is an is our intuition that only you have i think that all of us bring into the world something that no one else can bring and we spend so much of our time you know um derailed or distracted from our unique talents attributes contributions you know that could be that could be uh anything from new discoveries in medicine and science to a smile or a hello or uh, cooking someone dinner or breakfast who needs something. It doesn't have to be uh, anything grand, but it can be the act and it, the intention can be grand. Not, not, you know, and that too is very important. So if you, if one has, you know, if I had said, well, you know, it's, it's fabric, it's a rag rug, who cares? We would not be, I would not be in this group. You would not be, you would not be crocheting with me, right? So, um, but something inside me said, well, yeah, let's just see what that goes. So I, I, I encourage it. Yeah, if, it's, we, if, it's, um, if you have any idea of that, uh, that it's coming from you, from the inside out, I would pursue it. If it's, if it's not harmful, you know, and there's a context for it that's, that, that's uh, easy to uh, um, acquire, then yes, absolutely. Um. Do we have time maybe for some of the latecomers um, to do just another quick overview of how to get started? I'd be happy to. Awesome. Okay. So to get started with finger crochet jam is that you have to make uh, uh, tie together strips of fabrics. Just, you know, so these strips are about an inch, inch and a half, you know, doesn't really matter. Since we're not following a pattern, it won't matter. So at the very end, you find one strip of fabric that you like, and you just attach it by tying a double knot to another strip of fabric that you like, right? So you just cross it over, like you're tying a double knot underneath, and you cross it over and, and underneath, and you have a double knot, right? So it's really carefree. So if, if it's not, if one is shorter than the other, that's okay. Don't worry about it, right? So that's one strip of fabric. So now you got two. Then on the other end, just tie on one more strip of fabric. Any color, any pattern that you like. So for right now, I'm going to reach down here and get, you know, and, and you get this one and use this strip. And I'm just going to, it's a short one, doesn't matter. I'm just going to tie it on anyway, just cavalier, letting go of how it looks. I'm not going to worry about how it looks, right? So now I have uh, a string of fabric, strips of fabric that's tied together, right? So on one end, on one end, I'm going to create a loop, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to create a loop by just, you got two fingers and crossing it over, so you have a loop. And at the base of the loop, I'm going to tie a double knot again. So you just put it through one and tie it one more time. So you have a double knot. You want to keep your loop. Am I going too fast? Is, is, this, is this good? Should I slow down and go, what, is this good? Thank you. Okay, so now you have a loop. So from here, we're gonna create a chain of loops. So to do that, you just put your index finger on your thumb inside the loop. And you, when it comes to the, to the other part of the, of the fabric, you, Bring it up into your index finger and thumb and you grip it or pinch it. And then on top is the, the old loop and now you're creating a new loop and right, another loop, index finger and thumb on the inside. Pinch the fabric, bring it over. Index finger and thumb on the inside of a new loop. Bring the strip of fabric up and the old loop over and a new loop and you're making a chain of loops. So you keep doing that until you make a chain of loops as long as you want. So index finger and thumb, grab the fabric and pull the old loop over and a new loop and keep going. So 
So it looks something like that. I'm gonna make it a little longer. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna get it to this. I'm not sure what color that is. Maybe tan. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let me keep going. Okay. So now I have a, a chain of loops, right? See the loops on the sides here? There's a loop here. There's a, a loop, a loop there. All right. So, so now at the, the so now to start to weave, you have your the, you have your the, your finger on on the last loop, and you put your index finger. So there's one loop here, and on your chain of loops, anywhere on this chain, since we're not following a pattern and there are no rules, you can break the pattern. You you can go you know one one two, three, or you can skip and go to down here. And here's a loop, All right? So one loop on your, on your index finger and thumb, and now you got two loops on the index finger and thumb. You see them, two different colors, All right? Two loops, and you, do the, and you do the same thing. You grab the fabric, and now you pull both loops over, one, two and a new loop. So thumb and index finger in that loop. And now any loop you want, any loop on your chain that you like, it is your choice, right? Any one that you like, doesn't matter. And then you have, you have a loop on your thumb and index finger, and now you have a second loop on your thumb and index finger, two loops, and then you grab the fabric again, and you bring the, the fabric over. And now you have another loop. Right, and then on my chain here, here's a loop there. There's one here, anywhere I want. You can turn the fabric around, you can twist it and put, right? Now you got, now you got another one loop. Put this loop on, now you got two loops on your finger, oops. And then you grab the fabric again and you keep going. And after a while, you'll have what, you'll have the, the beginnings of a soft sculpture piece. And it'll keep, it'll keep growing and changing and you can, and then whenever you want, you can go, you can still go, you can go back to single crochet and, you know, and have a dangle. And then if you want, you can do a loop on your thumb and finger and then go back and get another loop. Uh, whoops, oh, here we go, that one. And then grab the fabric and pull it over and keep going. So. Sometimes you're gonna like what you see and you're calm. Sometimes you're not gonna like what you see and you're still calm. You just don't react. You're just equanimous the entire time. And then after a while, the more you allow the material to be, uh, be what it wants to become, it will reveal its secrets. Is that helpful? Did I? Yeah, no, I think that was done. Okay. So in given what, I, what I've just shown you, when you become comfortable, you can change that pattern too. If you wanna use your index finger and thumb throughout the whole time, you can. If you wanna just use your, thumb, your finger, index finger and grab, you know, and grab it with your index finger and, and pull it and pull both over on your finger, you can do that too. So you can change it. I'm just giving you the foundation. You, know, you can break the rules that I set out as well and add your own or create your own in any way that you like, or add more materials to what you're creating. And not worry about what it looks like. So we spend a lot of time worrying about how it's, you know, is it right? Is it good? Is it pretty? Is it happy? You know, am I, you know, am I good? And, and you know, those kind of, those, and you're gonna hear all that because you don't know what you're making. You know, you're, you're moving toward the unknown using the folk art, tradition of rag rug making. So move toward the unknown calmly, patiently, meditatively, and, right? And then your, something else will, will reveal itself and move toward that, move toward the unknown in a creative process. Because to be honest, every second is unknown. Calmly, patiently. And then you create something, <laughs> you know, uh, 
I like like what Jan is showing me there. That's pretty. That's <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> you know, and Maureen, that looks great. You know. Yeah. You know, yes. And flow. Wow, look what, look. I, you know, I, I like that when I see things that people are like moving it around, uh, going well in their minds and think, well, what, what is it? <laughs> and, then, and then I say, what does it have to be? Does it have to be anything? Can it just be? It is what it is, you know? Uh, you know and I, I think that's great to be in a moment where you just can't give it a label. You know, we have labels everywhere on everything. And they're, they're, they, def, they don't define us, but they can be depending on how people perceive them. So to be in a moment where you don't quite know what it is, I think it's a very, very special moment, very special time. And, and can we exist in a world without labels? And if you're looking at it without a label, you're definitely looking at it. You're really, you're not just saying it's, you know, you're really looking at it. Not just going, oh, it's a chair, but not noticing that it's a red chair with a wooden back and a metal uh, seat. You know, you're not just giving a label and dismissing it. When we give things label, we usually dismiss it because we don't have to think about it anymore. But when you're creating something like, like what you're doing here, you can't give it a label. So you're really connected to it. You're really looking at it. You're really engaged. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. <laughs> Which is how I go to the studio. You know, every time I, I wake up and I know that I'm going to create something I've not seen before, it gets me out of bed. There was a great comment from Akua earlier that it's amazing what you can do with the simplest stitch when the imagination and spirit creates. Yes, absolutely. That's beautiful. Wow. Yes. Yes. I mean, even the simplest stitch, like a fishing net, you know, that, that simple stitch was able to feed people for, for thousands of years. A very simple stitch, right? Um, Yes. You know, and even, the, you know, even as, you know, before there were staples in surgery, there were stitches. And those stitches were used, you know, in the same way that we would have stitches in our fabric and our clothes. These were stitches that were used to, um, for, uh, to heal and to heal uh, surgical wounds, whatever, you know, it's, it's and those, those, and it's a very simple idea, but it has an unbelievable amount of ramifications for health and wellness. A, a single knot, knot tying, tying knots, which is what stitches are. I mean, surgical stitches are knots, yes. And you can tie, if you want to, you can tie knots in these too. These are, you, you can bring macrame, <laughs> look at Scott. You can bring macrame, <laughs> uh, bring macrame to crochet. And what would, what would that look like? I don't know. I mean, I don't, you know, um, or you can bring sewing or quilting to uh, crochet. And see what, 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 would, what would that, not so much what it would look like, but what would it feel like? You know, what would it feel like? Have you ever brought painting into your crochet? Not yet. Um, you know, um, I, for a long time, I wanted to be a painter. I, and to be honest, I did paint. Um, I'm glad I don't paint now, but I'm glad but I did paint. But now I feel as though that I'm, I'm still painting, but I'm using broken ceramics and fabric to paint, to paint, to paint sculpture, I guess, right? Yeah. Right, so instead of using oil paint or acrylic or other materials, I, well, why can't I, why can't I just say that I'm using ceramics, which are beautiful uh, studio ceramics, 
um, and using fabric and instead of using a brush like a painter would use, I used a, a crochet hook. I don't know. I mean, so I'm not, so I don't feel, I don't feel that I'm uh, missing out or that I'm uh, um, not complete because I'm not a painter. I feel as though that I am painting using fabric and ceramics. And that way, that way it's a very, uh, it's a broad way of looking at what art is. You know, why can't I paint with, with ceramics? Or why can't I make sculpture or using different terms to, to transform how I want to see what art is. I mean, I feel, I feel as though that that's one of the real powers that I have as an artist is that I can decide or we can decide or you can decide without, you know, and no one else can tell you and you can decide what art is and, and how it's, you know, in this context, in a community art event, how its purpose can be redeemed and help other people see the world in a, in a more a redemptive kind of way that it, that, you know, that it can be healing, it can be meditative, it can be a social interacting, it can be bonding in a way that isn't about being controlled or being told what to do. And to be empowered. I mean, we, we feel as though that in many ways as individuals, we're not empowered, but I think art can, art in, the, in the studio art or community art can empower ourselves and others in very profound ways and certainly foster cri uh, critical thinking skills. Like, you know, I used to be a curator in a museum, and so my job was to vet. And, so, and with the title of curator, I was the one who said, this is art and that isn't. But I, I like it much better when I would see people come to my exhibitions <laughs> and they wouldn't read the text. <laughs> they would I mean, they'd go right by the text, look at their own work, and come up with their own ideas and walk out. I thought, wow. So, th so, you know, they're saying, well, I, they decide who their authority is. Instead of me saying I am the authority, they're going, well, you may think you're the authority, you know, you, you have that role, that title. But we as the individuals can look at the work and come up with our own concept of what we're seeing, the, the, the context in which we're seeing it and its purpose and the role in art. And then if we want to, we can go read your label. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It scared me the first time that happened. I thought, wait. And, but it also, I felt very liberated that people felt that much of an agency that, you know, we tell you you're an authority. You don't tell us you're an authority. That's great. Luckily, luckily, luckily I, I still got my job, though. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> oh, thank you. There's a comment from Dottie that says, if you're on the San Francisco Peninsula, fabmo.org is a nonprofit in Sunnyvale that has great fabrics in return for donations. Oh, wonderful. Let me write that, let me write that down. Mm -hmm. It also adds, they save discarded designer samples and more from going to the landfill and allow artists and anyone who can use them to repurpose them. So they open one weekend a month to distribute those. Wow. I'll put it in my, I'll put, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it again, please. It was fabmo.org. So that's F-A-B-M-O dot org. Okay. F-A-B-M-O-D. M-O-R-E. M-O-M-O-R-E. Dot org. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. And then, um, 
was just going to, since we're getting into the last 20 minutes or so here, um, there, I know some people might need to head out or anything, um, and you're free to do that. But I just wanted to send out this little poll, three question poll um, for folks. It's totally anonymous. Um, and please do fill that out if you have a chance. It just gives all of us a little bit more info. Okay. So that goes out to everybody. <clears throat> Scott, would you like to share a little bit more of your comment now that folks have had a moment to respond to those questions? Yeah, sure. Thanks for leaving the space, Rachel. Um, Again, so much, so much activity happening for, for the American Craft Council's debut craft week, um, this virtual online experience that we're trying to create here. And again, super indebted, Ramakan, for your, for your contributions here. This has been absolutely exceeded every expectation for what you could do in a virtual space for the community making. Like, it's, um, it's truly unbelievable. Thank you. Um, we have, um, we're doing a lot there and you can sort of mine all the different things that we're trying out um, from the Craft Week um, website. And one of those is um, a series of street scenes, we're calling them. And we've just asked area, Bay Area makers and creatives to sort of give us a day in the life of um, places they visit, projects they love, um, spaces they make in. And um, so we're releasing one each day and we just released our first one today that features um, features uh, Jenna Dominique from Oakland. But all of this conversation and these wonderful suggestions for places to visit in the Bay Area, which I'm really, really feeling sad that I can't visit. <laughs> I'm truly emotionally like challenging to not be there with you all in person. Um, made me think of a future, future craft scene that we should pull together one day, perhaps with the Museum of Craft and Design and, and Romacon and just really cool stuff. So thanks for sharing all those places and really cool projects, everybody. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Lindsay, everybody for, for pulling this together. This has been quite an undertaking and it is amazing to see how many different avenues of interaction you guys have managed to pull together from so far. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yes, now you can wear, now, now you're making a wearable. And we are on for more, more interaction tomorrow, correct? Museum of Craft and Design, can you tell us more about what's happening tomorrow? That's right, yes. Tomorrow we have our wonderful friends from um, Center for the Book are going to do oh. a workshop. Um, and it's going to be a pop-up card workshop. So um, artist Bettina Pauly will be joining us and she's a dynamo with paper craft. Um, and is going to just be showing us a few different ways that we can take simple, boring old paper and turn it into something super interesting, super fun. Um, I and mean, it's, it's another process-based um, uh, way to look at materials differently. So we really hope you'll join us. It'll be at 11 um, a.m. as well. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we've got a lot of folks who have, who are definitely eager to bring this technique to their family get-togethers and to show people 
how to do finger crochet jam. That's wonderful. Yes, absolutely. You know, as a, as a family gathering, that'd be wonderful. <clears throat> that'd be great. I mean, it can be, it can be done virtually as well. Like this. Well, yeah. and, sorry. Go ahead. I don't know, thinking about the, um, the sort of connotations of the quilt making and like if you are doing finger crochet jam with your family and um, being able to maybe combine materials that everybody are, are con contributing or um, using old, old t-shirts or things like that to almost make like a sculptural quilt. For, yeah. yeah. You know, or even take the quilt out of it, out of its context, you know, like, you know, what would that, what would that look like? I mean, you know, I don't know what that means, to be honest, but putting it in, yeah, that would be, yes, the idea of, of making it so that you now, you, you know, since the material is a teacher's, anyone can, can organize their, you know, their, their event, their crochet event. Now, I, I think it'd be kind of cool to have a, a crochet jam or a crochet event at a wedding where the guests come in, <laughs> you know, the, the guests come in and they're expecting all kinds of, you know, um, but I think it's their inter, inter, interactive events so that, so that the, both the parties, the groom and the bride, the wedding parties, families, can can play together and make stuff and or, and not have to buy anything. They just make they make their own gifts and they take them home with them. Or you come into a wedding, and uh, you have your crochet event uh, thing, a free form, and you have a a, a a a type a type jam, a typing typewriter jam, or where people can type on typewriters. They can. You know, they can leave notes to the wedding party, to the bride and groom. <laughs> they can just type them right there, right? Uh, you know, all you need is some old typewriters and some paper, and bam, you got a, you know, a typathon, a wedding typathon. I do want to note that we have participants coming from Maryland, from New York. Uh, from Virginia and really many places across the country, which well, is really wonderful. exciting. Welcome everyone. Thank you for being with us. That's, you know, that's wonderful. And in some ways we can reach people on these virtual that wouldn't be able to just walk into the museum. Wow. So it's quite wonderful that, you know, and eventually they'll be able to do both. So I hope you can continue your virtual uh, programming along with the uh, gallery exhibitions and other programs there. That would be, cause you're getting people able to contact people around the world, or, you know, potentially around the world. Certainly, yeah. The, the hybrid format is definitely um, in, within the goals to be able to make sure that people are able to keep distance and also be together at once. That's, yes. So is a new show up on is up on up online at the museum? Is shortly. it the new cycles? Yes. So shortly we will have Moto 2020, um, a very fascinating, amazing, dynamic show um, of all custom, like one-off motorcycles that have been created by artists and designers from uh, around the world. So in the midst of all of this and the pandemic and the world shutting down, our curator, our amazing curator, Ariel Zacchio, has been uh, coordinating the shipment and delivery of these incredible vehicles from around the world. So um, we're really excited to be able to show that off. And since we're not open yet to the public, there will be um, a 360 um, video um, that will be shot uh, in the coming weeks. We are waiting, waiting on one more of the vehicles that was um, uh, hung up. So very soon, um, everybody should actually sign up for the Happening Now newsletter. I'll put in our, um, our website here um, because then you will get first access to see that video. Wonderful.
And we have, we've been doing a lot of things um, online. We've got uh, part of that newsletter as well as our MCD at home projects where um, every other week we have four different projects that we do. Um, they're totally downloadable and doable um, in your own home. They use a lot of materials found around your own home too. We're not trying to send you out to any stores or anything like that. Um, but there are a lot of really fun projects for all ages, um, kind of a cool way to explore at home making while we're all still stuck here. Hi, Scott. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's a lot of creativity and play. So, <laughs> so, you know, I think people, I think we forget that, that um, the foundation of creativity is play, you know, the whole idea that we as adults don't, la don't allow ourselves to play as much as we need to. I think we need to play more often and, you know, cause it's uh, playing has its way of uh, allowing us to let go of, you know, young people when they're really young, they don't have the rules, so they play all the time. They push all kinds of things, they just play all the time. And at a certain, at a certain age, we, we become uh, socialized, whatever you want to call it, and we know there's a thing where we should and should not do what things should and should not look like, and we, 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 we buy into it. But I think play, you know, allows us to be able to to let go of and be a little more liberated from all of that hard wiring that we have to feel this so that we have to be a part of to be um, socialized and a part of the culture. So particularly when we're stressed and you know, not just now, but whenever 
we are stressed. Play, I think, like we're doing with this, is a type of play that there's a lot of creativity that can be uh, experienced and absorbed that can be healing and meditative in play. In a couple minutes, it would be fun if everybody turned their video on and we could do hold up our pieces maybe and get a screenshot for anybody who's comfortable doing that. That would be pretty okay. Cool. We've got a wearable piece up there. Beautiful. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Whoa. Very spontaneous. Wow, these are wonderful. You know, oh, oops, sorry. I was just a few starting to be shown here. So much variety. Fantastic. Wow. As you said before, it's wonderful to see them from all sides as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at Charlotte's. That, that's, uh, that's, that's really magical. I took your suggestion for some straws. I have too many. 
No, you, no, you can't have too many. Can you have too many? Maybe in my drawer there were too many. Not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know. This I don't know. I, I I just like the idea of the absurd. I just think that you know. You know, the absurdity of things. So, did you get your photographs? Are we? Do we do it again or no? I'll do it one more time. Okay, I wasn't. I was too busy. Oh, no. Too busy. All right, I can hold mine up, but I'll do it here. All right. One, two. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> thank you, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us today. I was I couldn't have done this without you. And um, you really broke the ice for these huge <laughs> events. So we really appreciate it. We'll send you a follow-up email, too. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. So, so thank you so much, you know. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. And thank you for your support of creativity and the museum and craft week. Yeah, thanks AC. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys, it was great. It was really nice watching this. Oh, uh, thank you. Right. Till next time. It Bye. was, it was fabulous. Thank you ah. so much. Oh, you're so welcome. You. You're very I loved welcome. it. <laughs> great. Okay. Um, All right, thanks Ramakan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.